In the introduction to the modern theologians, when I'm trying to give people a framework within which to understand the immense variety of modern Christian theology. I mean, when you look at Christian theology in the last century, I mean, the modern theologians takes it from 1918 up to the present. Um, it has, I think, been one of the most fruitful and creative periods in the whole history of Christian theology. And this has several dimensions to it. I mean, one is that theology, Christian theology is now done all around the world in ways that simply was not true over a century ago. That has meant that we now genuinely have to engage with African theologies, Asian theologies, South American theologies, Australian theologies, and so forth. And all of these uh, new types of theology, which are related to their own contexts often, that they need to be taken into account. Uh, likewise, we, there have been many new voices in theology. The most obvious and important, I think, are women's voices in theology. Uh, for many centuries, there were very few major voices in theology that were those of women. Uh, and now, just in a, a few decades, uh, many women have both trained in theology and also are leading theological voices. And this not just in Europe and North America, but in other parts of the world as well. And, uh, and then there's also a whole range of uh, different interests, political interests, economic interests, cultural interests and so forth that are represented in theology in new ways. And there's been a blossoming of theology and, you know, theology and the sciences, theology and film, theology and literature, theology and art, theology and spirituality, theology and so, and so on. There's endless ones of these. And the problem in editing the modern theologians was that a book of 800 pages even, even is not enough to begin to do justice to the great variety. And one of the painful things as an editor was having to exclude so much. But one of the issues in the introduction was how to give people a framework for understanding all this. And the one that I found most helpful, and it has been so helpful that I have included it in all three editions of the modern theologians, I, uh, the, the feedback from people was that this really did help as a way into modern theology, was the typology of Hans Frey, that's F-R-E-I, uh, who was one of my own teachers in Yale and whose book, Types of Christian Theology, uh, which were his uh, Edward Cadbury lectures in the University of Birmingham, published posthumously when he sadly died young. Uh, but uh, Hans Frey, I think, was one of the really great theologians of the 20th century. And in this book, he was laying the foundation for a major historical work that he never lived to write. But he was deeply dissatisfied with the ways in which people talked about theology in terms of liberal and conservative and radical or something like that. And he wanted a different typology, something that could really do justice to the range of theologies. And what he came up with was a five-point continuum, uh, at one end of which is the sort of theology that takes a particular modern philosophy or other framework and fits Christian theology into it. It says, like Kant is one of his examples, you know, a philosopher who has his own philosophy and says, look, I'm very happy to affirm Christian things as long as it fits my philosophy. And so therefore he, he says, you know, on my terms only. Now that, as you can see, is one way of approaching modernity, you know, that uh, you can, as a religious person, say that I will accept the frameworks that, mo that the modern world offers to me in some way, and I'll fit my Christian theology into that. In other words, I'll assimilate my faith to a particular modern framework. Now, that's one extreme. At the other extreme is a form of Christianity that says, no, I have the truth in a particular form of Christianity, and my attitude modernity is that if it fits in with my Christianity, then fine, otherwise I simply reject it. So that those are the two extremes, and often people think 
of things in those sort of binaries. Now, the most interesting thing about Fry's work is that he shows that there are three categories in between, at least three. I mean, and there can be all sorts of mixtures, of course. Um, dead center is the sort of theology that brings some modern understanding or framework into dialogue with Christianity and says, look, there's an endless back and forth between them, and it's not resolved. You never come to a simple dominance of Christianity or a dominance of the modern philosophy or framework. Uh, and that's at, right at the center, and he sees that sort of theology being uh, that of, for example, Schleiermacher or Paul Tillich. Um, it's a theology of correlation, where you're constantly correlating things with each other. Now, nearer to the first extreme is the sort of Christian theology that takes a particular philosophy, Bultmann would be a good example, taking existentialist philosophy, and says, look, I will bring that into dialogue with Christianity, and it will uh, help to illuminate Christianity, and I want to be genuinely Christian, but I will also cut out the things that don't actually ring true with this. And of course, uh, that's what Bultmann does with the New Testament, and he demythologizes it, and he uses his existentialist philosophy, and often, of course, has a substantial amount of Christian context content in that. Uh, but the but when it comes push comes to shove, he can have a great deal of Christian content, and he has chosen uh, a philosophy that's very hospitable to a lot of Christian content. Um, but when push comes to shove. Uh, he actually will cut certain things out of Christianity if they don't fit with his existentialist hermeneutic. So that's one. And then the final one is the one uh, nearer the other extreme, which says, look, Christianity as a, f as a faith um, is what we believe, that it makes deep sense in its own terms all right, and we accept that this is the, uh, the, the, the basic testimony to who God is and what God's purposes are, but we will bring it into constant dialogue with modernity. But if there is a fundamental difference between the two, then we will go for the Christian testimony to Jesus Christ or to who God is. And in other words, it's, uh, it, it's the, it, it, instead of letting the philosophy have the last word, it lets the Christian, traditional Christian faith or scripture have the, have the last word. Now that's Karl Barth would be seen by Fry as being uh, within that, uh, that category. Now in the introduction to the modern theologians, I use that framework as the one through which to situate this huge variety of theolog theologies uh, of the last hundred years. And I think that it gets rather nicely, Fry's typology does, the dilemma that faces anybody who wants to both be in faith and also live sensitively in the contemporary world. In other words, you're faced with the questions of whether you just assimilate to it and whether you just go along with whatever seems to be the modern understanding. You're faced with, or, you're, or do you just go along with traditional Christian understanding and be quite clear that you don't change anything of that. Usually people go for a particular Christian understanding of a particular period. You know, it's Reformation Christianity or patristic Christianity or counter-Reformation Christianity or Vatican I or Vatican II. But, um, the, but you know, do you go for that or do you have a more discriminating? Now, most people actually say there are certain things I want to accept about modernity, there are certain things I want to reject, and there are certain things I will work to transform. Now, I think Fry's typology gives you a framework within which you can situate the various Christian responses in those terms, some of which are more on the assimilating side, some of which are more on the anti-modern side, and some of which are deeply dialogical with modernity, but in different ways. One thing that's very obvious about 20th and 21st century Christian theology is how deeply they are influenced by uh, 
19th century Christian theology. And even when not consciously so, the intellectual atmosphere that has been created by the sort of thinking that happened in the 19th century has been deeply influential on 20th and 21st centuries. In other words, that to be literate in contemporary Christian theology, one has to understand something of the 19th century background. Now, of course, ideally you understand the 18th century and the 17th century and the 16th century right the way back to the 5th century BC when you're engaging with Plato and Aristotle. But, uh, but, that is, uh, but I'm saying that if I were choosing just one century in order to make sense of 20th and 21st century theology in particular, then I think it has to be the 19th century. Now, why is that so? There, I think it is because there was a series of absolutely formative thinkers, especially around that remarkably creative time in European thought around 1800, you know, and the, the sort of decades just beforehand and just afterwards. When we have Immanuel Kant, we have Friedrich Schleiermacher as a theologian. Um, we have um, Fichte, we have uh, Schelling, we have uh, Hegel. Uh, and of those, probably the three most important for theology are Kant, uh, Schleiermacher and Hegel. But also moving on through the century, we have uh, Søren Kierkegaard, the great Danish thinker, who uh, sometimes I must say for me is the single most generative thinker of the 19th century, somebody who s continues to stimulate the most extraordinary variety of uh, thinking uh, in relation to key Christian issues. Um, and, uh, and of course he was largely ignored in his own time and then rediscovered in the 20th century. And I think he's going through something of a revival now again, and deservedly so. Uh, a remarkable Christian thinker who's also a deeply biblical thinker actually, which is often